what led me to become an electrician? Well, my particular story was totally by accident. I was working at a grocery store. Um, my dad had just passed away, and I was still in high school, actually, at my senior year, and they were remodeling the grocery store that I worked in. My dad had a long illness, so we were struggling financially, and my mom had to work 48 to 50 hours a week to pay the bills. So I'm working at this grocery store, they're remodeling, I'm working every shift I possibly can to get enough hours to help pay the bills, and there were some wires that had been left out of the wall, and I'm pulling a pallet jack back out of the back room and the wires got me. And uh, luckily the guy that was working there was like an ex-college football player, and he did kind of one of those put his hand on my forehead and let me swing till I got tired and calmed down and he says, you know, I think you ought to go down and, and talk to these people about, you know, what we do. And I didn't know there were different trades involved in different specialties. So I applied for the apprenticeship, I graduated high school, then I got accepted into the program and didn't know I was going to love it like I do and here I am 20, almost 25 years later. It was a typical process and it's the same process that's used now. There are some minimum requirements to be eligible to, to be accepted in the apprenticeship. So you had to have, I had to get my college or my high school transcripts, you know, showing that, that I had those prerequisites, which is, you know, a, a year of algebra and that I graduated. Those were the, were the two things that I needed. So I, get, I did that, I made the application. There was an aptitude test that I took and then it, went on to the interview process where you interview with the apprenticeship committee and then you know you get accepted into the program and they send you to work. The greatest benefits of my career is the freedom to choose really you know, what I do and now I'm to the point in my career that I, I get to really have a lot of say in what types of projects I work on and what kind of work because the electrical field is so vast it sounds corny, but if you love what you do, you don't work a day in your life. I really love what I do. So I pursued a lot of leadership roles and with my role as Vice President of Utah Women in the Trades because there's a need for it and I know how it helped me. So when I first came down and, and, and learned about the apprenticeship, there was actually a woman that was on the apprenticeship board. She was the chair of the committee at the time and she mentored me and that was one thing that she taught me is is to be a mentor to others and and I mentor guys too but uh, there's a lot of people out there that'll mentor those guys I specifically try to make sure that that our women have that mentorship and can navigate any any circumstance that they run into and sometimes it's just a, a you know helping them make a decision about their career sometimes it could be dealing with some physical challenges on the job sometimes it's trying to help them identify that the fact that maybe some of the problems they're having is because they need a little bit of extra help on skill and sometimes that if, if you have a guy that's you know six feet tall and 250 pounds teaching you how to bend pipe he's going to use a little bit of different technique and so sometimes it's just about showing them a technique that the, the people that they haven't been working with understand or know because they have different physical attributes. All of that is important to, to help these women because they can do the work, they just may have to do it a little bit differently. For women specifically, the trades are, are good because there's a, a few things that have changed the industry. So technology has changed the industry. I mean, it used to, you know, people say, that women don't have a place here because of the hard physical labor and stuff like that. Well, people have realized that it's not fair to do that to the guys either. And so they've developed so many things technologically, like safer tools, policies about you know how much you, you lift, different things like that, that's made the work a lot more attractive to women in general. But the money is, is a big part, and that comes back to being able to make good decisions. I mean, here in Utah especially, we're raised to, you know, our first career that we look at is wives and mothers. Um, and in today's society, that's not necessarily always going to be what the path is going to have to be for a woman. And so now the trades, you're able to build a career, you get, get some freedom in, in your choices on, on what you do there, 
and you learn a skill that helps you become more independent, whether that was your intention or not, that independence in having something that's a skill, it's demonstrable, it's in demand, nobody cares anymore if you're male, female, or whatever. It's just a high demand industry that you can make really good money at and earn that independence so you can make whatever decisions you want about your life.